Um, Madam Chair, ladies and gents, um, thank you for the invitation. For those of you who don't know me, and I assume that's all of you, um, my name is um, Kurbus Fisser, and um, I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences. And you may very well ask, why am I here? And um, this short story that I need to tell about this is that the relationship between um, UWC and Symphonia has come a long way. And I remember many, many years ago that I met up with Dr. Louise van Rijn in the rector's office. And she came to me and she said, well, I'm Dr. Louise van Rijn. Who are you? And I said, well, I'm Kobus Visser. And she said, well, what are you doing here? And I... Uh, the result of that conversation is that after so many years, we still have this, this meeting and this kind of relationship. Um, why I'm very happy about that is that the rector in his discussion then thought it wise that the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences should um, become the partner in the university with um, partners, for, principles, partners for Possibility or then the organization as we know it, Symphonia. And it's, someone, it's something which has developed into what it is today, and it is something that we as a university certainly treasure. And we would like to continue with that as long as it is possible. Even if we do not have microphones here, we give you a new classroom. This is the most recent building on campus. It's the Chemical Sciences Building, and here yeah, they do cutting-edge technology and research into into saving electricity, into finding alternatives to, <laughs> to, uh, you know, alternatives to ESCOM or alternatives to fuel. So um, really, it's, it's, it's a good place to be as well. Um, we're very proud, as I said, to be associated with um, Partners for Possibility and for the mere fact that it is an organization that goes beyond just ordinary profit-making in that it attends to matters which are critical to the well-being of us as a nation and for you in the very important role that we do as educators of our nation. And that job we cannot stress enough. Um, this is a manifestation of being an engaged university. UWC prides itself on being an engaged university, that it has very close working relationships with the communities that it serves. And this is also a part of being an engaged university, and hence the reason why we put our weight and some of the resources that we have behind this and the reason why we wish to continue with this. Another reason why I am excited to just briefly talk to you is for the fact that um, until the end of last year, or during the course of last year, there were 23 universities in South Africa, and then we acquired two more, one in the Northern Cape and one in Mpumalanga. So now we have 25 universities. And those 25 universities are divided into three tiers or three groups. And Tier 3 is merely teaching universities. And there are quite a number of universities in that category. And then we get Tier 2, which is a combination of teaching and research universities, and we get quite a number of institutions in that category. And then we have the highest tier, or Tier number 1, of universities in South Africa. And those universities have the distinction of being research universities. And why am I happy to be connected to you or our faculty to be connected to your organization and the schools is the fact that UWC is now part and had been so for the past four years as part of the research universities in South Africa. And that's where the real knowledge is being created. And we are the only so-called, and I use the term with great caution, of historic, historically black universities <coughs> that have come into the tier one university that we are now a research-based university. And if you see this building and the other one where many of you had been in our last meeting previously and the <coughs> other buildings, and you will see that those are all manifestations of where we cometh from 
and where we are now. So we are now mixing it with the big boys. These are big challenges and the big girls. They're tremendous challenges, but it's a challenge that UWC has taken on and that we would like to deal with in, in the best possible way. If you look at this, um, each of you received scribble notes like this, and somewhere at the bottom, it indicates our logo and our slogan. And the slogan of this university, and I read it to you there, is a place of quality, a place to grow from hope to action through knowledge. Now, why do I repeat that and state it in this context? And it's for the mere reason that if one looks at the reason for today's meeting and you look at this very important thing, the, uh, the school governing bodies, the selection and functionality, then deals with the well-being of our leaders of tomorrow. And this is our job too, that at this place we give people hope by giving them the opportunity to study and to learn in a safe place. And therefore, um, this is a most relevant topic to talk about today, and you've got all the speakers to engage with you. And I realize the importance now, thinking back of many years ago, when I also, I can't say the privilege, but I had the the position of being a chair of a school governing body for a period of five years, and it was a relatively financially sound school. But if I think of all the hassles that we've had there, then I can just think about the hassles at schools that are not as well resourced as that. So this is a very relevant topic. Thank you for being here. I hope that I will see many of you again at our next or your next um, meetings that you organize here at UWC. Uh, if there are um, principals from high schools, then uh, I'd like to make an appointment with you. I need to come and talk to you about your students and having them here next year and the year after that and the year after that. But I will engage with you in that. Thank you so much and all the very best with your afternoon.